Okay, so those are the screws for the Acorn Electron. Uh, a few of them have got slightly different threads in them. I think someone's been in this Electron once before. Hey everyone, great news. Um, so we've had some donations to the cave. I've just found the light switch in the shed, which is great. Uh, the camera has night vision on it. Awesome. Doo -doo. Oh, there we go. Um, so this is a power supply for an Acorn Electron. Uh, you might notice it's only got one cable uh, on it that the other one had broken off. So uh, it's a bit old, it's a bit knackered. We've got to refurbish this. And when we've refurbished this with a little bit of luck, we'll be able to try out the Acorn Electron. My good mate, Mark, who is cameraman at the moment. Say hello, Mark. Hello. <laughs> He's very kindly donated a Philips monitor to the cave as well. So uh, let's see how we do. Let's get the screws out of this bad boy. Sorry, the bench, the workbench is an absolute mess. All right, I'm just popping a couple of screws in. I've already removed a couple of screws from this. All right, so here we go. So there's no components in here. This is literally just an AC transformer uh, and it puts out 19 volts AC through this cable here to the Acorn Electron. So what I've got is I've got a whole bunch of extra cable right here and I have a little DC barrel jack and what we're going to do is just solder that on there maybe put a cable tie around there as a cable restraint and um, hopefully use a multimeter obviously just to check that everything's working and then we should be able to plug it into the Acorn Electron and uh, we'll see how we do! <laughs> So good news, what we've done then is we've put a little knot in the cable and we've soldered the cable onto the appropriate terminals of the transformer. And what we'll do is we'll pop the cover back on, we'll screw it all up, <laughs> it's properly screwed up, and um, and then we'll pop it, uh, we'll plug it into the wall and we'll see if we've got uh, 19 volts AC coming out of it. Now the other thing we obviously have to do is solder a DC barrel jack onto the end there. Top tip people, don't forget, to take the DC barrel jack and pop that on the cable before soldering it all up. Otherwise you're gonna end up doing this job twice. All right, okay, so we've soldered uh, rather badly some uh, cables onto this and it doesn't matter which way round they go because it's AC. And what we've, we've got some heat shrink here. And what we're gonna do is just, uh, oh, just heat shrink up those bits. Whack this guy over the top of that. Yeah, it's not a real, uh, it's not a real DC barrel jack. I didn't have a real one, unfortunately. So uh, this one's just going to have to do. Right, let's plug this bad boy in. And, a bit of luck. Yes, 21 volts AC. AC, DC, oh yeah, cool. All right, cool. So Mark very kindly donated uh, a Philips monitor to the shed. And if we press the button, this hopefully should turn on. Needs a bit of a clean off. It's been up in his loft for some time. Check it out, static. Haven't seen that for ages. And then this is the Acorn Electron right here. So uh, looks to be in reasonably good condition. Might need a bit of a gentle clean. Righto, so. Acorn Electron, TV, appears to work, plugged in, here's the new power supply. It works, but it's not doing what it should. So let's have a quick look inside and see what, uh, see what it looks like. It's actually quite clean in here, it's looking pretty good. Okay. Five volts. Minus five volts. So they look okay. And through further investigation, we found the cause of the problem. The cause of the problem was this corroded chip holder for the ULA. The ULA appears to be intact, but the pins on this chip holder were so far corroded that they were literally falling out. So this is the speaker. This is the UHF tuner. And then over here we've got the ULA chip, which is the cause of our problems at the moment. 
although I wasn't aware of that when I was making this video. And then we've got the 6502, which uh, is the processor for the uh, for the Acorn. But everything seems to be uh, everything seems to be really clean in here, and it's only until you take that lid off the ULA that you suddenly realise that uh, underneath that ULA is a whole load of corrosion and uh, a whole uh, a bunch of problems. So um, I've got some some new boards on order. Thankfully, uh, there's a gentleman um, uh, on Twitter. Uh, I put a little message out on Twitter and said, uh, can anybody help, please? And um, a gentleman came back on Twitter and said, yeah, uh, I've got a couple of boards. Uh, yeah, I also have one with a mashed ULA socket, but the other one um, has a ULA in it that probably works. And this is the RAM here. So if I get any problems now, I've got the ability to at least uh, to be able to replace um, the, the, the chips on that uh, PCB. You know, with a couple of spare boards, I should be able to fix this at Acorn Electron. All power to the public domain. Thank you so much. It's really very kind of you. Uh, to uh, to off to send me those boards. So um, going forwards, hopefully we should have a working Acorn Electron. For now, let me just show you a little preview of an emulator. As always, many many thanks for watching. Many thanks to our patrons for being patrons. Many thanks to uh, all of our subscribers. If you're not subscribed, then please go ahead and subscribe. And, uh, you know, obviously give us a bit of a thumbs up. And uh, if you've got any thoughts, suggestions or comments, please go ahead and leave them below. They're always uh, very useful to, to, to see, to hear, and it always encourages the channel. As always, many thanks for watching. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.